It's been four months since Apple released the brand new M2 MacBook Pros in the 14 and 16 inch versions. And in that time, I've made this M2 Max my primary device for everything I do, including my day job, YouTube, personal stuff, and whatever else I do on a laptop. I really like this computer as my daily driver, but there are a couple things that I wish were better. So let me tell you how I feel about this laptop after four months of use. This right here is the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the base M2 Max or Baby Max. Yeah, Baby Max, it's a thing. I said it in a previous video, look it up. The silicon in this machine has 12 CPU cores, 32 GPU cores, 32 gigabytes of memory, and I did go ahead and upgrade the storage to two terabytes. So the way I use this laptop and the way I want to review it is from the perspective of a desktop laptop. Yeah, I use this laptop primarily as a desktop machine and the term comes from Marco from the Accidental Tech Podcast, which you should definitely check out. But this machine basically lives right over here on my desk connected to my CalDigit dock and my studio display 90% of the time. However, when I do travel, I like to take this with me because I like the portable power just in case I need it, which I rarely do. The 14 inch size of this MacBook Pro just fits perfectly below the studio display, allowing me to have two displays right in front of me without having to look left or right. When I was using the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the studio display had to be set a bit higher, which was a little uncomfortable and less ergonomic. Now, I'll talk more about the display in just a minute, along with performance and design and some things I do not like, but first I wanna thank UPDF for sponsoring this video. UPDF is a one-stop solution for all your PDF needs that allows you to create and edit any PDF using Mac, Windows, or mobile devices, all with a single license. You can set UPDF as your default PDF reader for a fast and fluid reading experience and your viewing preference. Annotating documents is easy with UPDF. You can quickly highlight areas that need work and leave a comment for your coworkers with specific feedback, or you can even add a sticker to really emphasize your point. With UPDF, you can quickly complete fillable documents and create your own signature using the mouse, trackpad, or a typed version and add that right to the page. There are so many other features including exporting to multiple formats, reducing PDF sizes, adding OCR, and more. You can try out all of these features for free and when you're ready, you can unlock everything and save 54% on UPDF and get 10 gigabytes of cloud storage by using the link in the description below. And my thanks to UPDF for sponsoring this video. When it comes to the design, there is nothing I would change about this M2 Max MacBook Pro's appearance. It's the refined classic aluminum laptop that we got in 2021 with the M1 versions. And as a pro machine, it doesn't feel too bulky or heavy, even when using away from a desk. On the inside, the 14.2 inch display takes over with the tiny bezels. And I like the two-tone look with the black keyboard and silver chassis. But here's the first thing that I dislike about the MacBook, and that is the keyboard material. I love how the Magic Keyboard feels and responds. It has just the right amount of travel, it's not too loud, and it's consistent across all of the Apple keyboards from laptops to the iPad Magic Keyboard to the desktop version. I can just switch between devices and not miss a beat. But the material is junk. And after just a few days, you start to see wear on the keyboard that looks like shiny spots. I made a whole video about this and I tried using stickers and keyboard covers to prevent shiny spots from appearing, but they really just take away from the feel of the keyboard. The spots will continue to get worse over time, especially on the keys that you use the most. And for me, that's the right side of the space bar. I understand that wear can happen over time, but it literally starts within days on MacBooks. It takes this very expensive laptop and makes it look cheap. And I wish that Apple would change something to help prevent this. When it comes to the ports on the MacBook Pro, I generally only use two of them. I connect the CalDigit TS4 to a Thunderbolt port which has SD card readers, external drives, ethernet, my studio display, and other USB dongles. This also charges my laptop at up to 98 watts, so I don't even use MagSafe. Even when I'm away from my desk or traveling, I just don't use MagSafe because I just don't wanna carry around another cord. I was really excited when MagSafe returned to the Mac, but quickly found that it was redundant for me, and getting 98 watts through USB-C was just fine for me. The other port I use a lot is the SD card reader. Yes, I said that I use the SD card reader on the dock and I actually use both. I like to be able to import from multiple cards at the same time and sometimes I'll just use the one on the MacBook. I'm happy to have this reader built in, but it's actually slower than all of the external readers that I have. And I hate the feeling of actually putting SD cards in this. It just feels rough and unrefined. And sometimes it just doesn't even connect to the Mac. You have to remove the card and reinsert it a couple of times 
to get the Mac OS to actually read it. So that is kind of annoying. It's not the MacBook's best feature. I don't use the HDMI port often, but it can do up to 244 hertz at 4K if that's something that you need. Okay, this 14.2 inch liquid retina XDR display is just mind blowing. It is the best display that Apple makes, save for the 16 inch version. The display just has crazy, amazing colors. The ProMotion is so awesome because you can scroll up and down long web pages and get barely any blur at all. The HDR content almost literally jumps right out of the screen because it gets so bright with up to 1600 nits of brightness that the rest of the page just looks dingy and dark. And despite a small amount of blooming with the 2000 plus dimming zones, it's still the best Mac display I've used, but I am hoping for a move to OLED at some point. And yes, there is a notch, but that's okay because it just fades away, just like it did on the iPhone 10 many years ago. Sure, it would be nice to not have a notch, but it no longer bothers me. And when it comes to the built-in camera on this MacBook Pro, it's fine, it works for video calls or whatever, but it is really soft as you can see. Like, there's just not a lot of detail in this image. And the colors kind of come and go and change as the white balance changes as you move around, which is kind of annoying. It would be nice if you could actually set some of those settings so that it didn't just keep changing as you moved around. It's doing okay right now. But anyway, this is also the built-in microphones on this MacBook Pro. I use this camera and these microphones on a regular basis for my job, and I've had no complaints from people on the other end. Now I want to touch on performance. And like I said, this is the M2 Max version with 12 CPU cores, 30 GPU cores, 32 gigabytes memory, and two terabyte SSD. And this thing comes in at a mind boggling $3,500, which I will admit is overkill for me, but I like it. This model is about 10 to 25% faster than the comparable M1 Max model. And that directly relates to the extra CPU cores and GPU cores in the M2 Max. And comparing it to other M2 chips, it is a pretty linear upgrade in both GPU and CPU performance. And as far as my use, this thing is just buttery smooth. Most of my work consists of web browsing, email, remote server administration, Teams messaging, video calls, and well, of course, some video editing and some photo editing with Pixelmator Pro. I hit most of those programs actually pretty hard and the computer never chokes up or feels laggy, except when I was using Premiere Pro. I needed to edit a few videos in Premiere Pro and that program just did not like my 4K multicam Sony videos, no matter what I did or how I converted them. The timeline would just stutter and the playback was choppy and I would get beach balls every now and then just trying to edit the video. Not only that, Premiere Pro also made the computer fans kick on when rendering and the computer got pretty warm. Actually, that's a pretty good point. This computer does get warm. I might even say lukewarm. I expected the M2 Max to get warmer than the M2 Pro because that's how it was with the M1 versions, but I think it's more noticeable with this model. In my regular use with my regular non-video apps running, the keyboard can get to around the high 20s or even mid 30s degrees Celsius. When doing more intensive tasks like exporting video, it can get to the mid 40s or even slightly higher. This is actually pretty noticeable and something I catch myself thinking about now and then because I can feel the heat radiating off of the keyboard. If I were using this computer more often as a laptop away from my desk, I would probably have a bigger problem with it, but I don't think it's a deal breaker if you need or want this kind of power in this form factor. And speaking of form factor, this is a laptop and it has a battery and I can get through a full day of my regular job and personal computing without issue. If I undock at 8 a.m. and go work from the couch or kitchen table, I can get eight or nine hours of work done and still have about 40% of the battery left over or depending on the days, I might even get a day and a half off one charge. Now that's not quite as good as the 13 or 16 inch MacBook Pros, but it's plenty for regular work. And I don't have any issue with the battery on this laptop, but you can expect to get maybe a little bit less with heavier workloads. So should you get this 14 inch M2 Max MacBook Pro? Yes, or no, or I don't know. This is a fantastic computer in just about every way. It has the right features for what I need to get my work done and a design that I simply love. The performance of the M2 Max is above what I actually need, but I want that extra headroom for whatever comes my way. I do wish, however, that Apple would use a better keyboard material. That is my number one issue with MacBooks. I hate it. Also, the M2 Max runs a little hot and the camera kind of sucks. For anyone who is not using professional apps for video, photo, or audio production, or big data research, this is going to be overkill and you may want to look at the MacBook Air or even 
the MacBook Pro or M2 Pro version of this MacBook. And for anyone considering upgrading from an M1 Pro or Max, I would say skip it. Unless you need a computer with more RAM or SSD than the one you got. Anyway, do you need the power of the M2 Max or will something else work just fine for you? Let me know in the comments below. Also, check out this video if you want to see me comparing the M2 Pro to the M2 Air. Check out that video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.